What's up guys, this is David AK Reverse Long and it's uh, Saturday and I'm at the athletic club, the gym I go to, this is the rooftop. It's not only a gym, it's like, um, it's a social club, so they have like a lot of lounges inside, they have a restaurant, they have a speakeasy, they have like a sports bar, they have like a uh, communal work area and stuff, they, they have a lot, they even have a hotel. So anyway, this spot on the 17th of September, September 17th, we're going to have the the final day of like the friendly bear conference so the 16th the day before we're gonna have uh the conference at the double tree hotel which is right like little tokyo down that way and uh, that's a full day event then sunday we're coming here for a talk and we're gonna talk for a while and also friday before the conference so it's a weekend long thing friday saturday sunday and um friday we're gonna have a talk in my office in uh the u.s bank tower right there I'm in the 28th floor, Well, we're going to also talk, at the, they call it the Vista, the, the 54th floor, panoramic views all over LA, top notch, I, I love that place, and we're going to sit down there for like after hours, oh, what do you call it, like when, when, uh, after the market closes, 2 p.m. here in the West Coast, till 6 p.m., till the Vista closes, and then we're going to have a two-hour break, and then we're going to go to the hotel bar where the, where the conference is at, and we're going to have a meet and greet. And then Saturday, the full conference at the hotel, the Double Tree in downtown in uh, Little Tokyo. And um, yeah, this is a 30 to 50 person conference. So tickets have been selling, man. And um, there's some good traders coming. There's some good traders coming. So it's your opportunity to like really network intimately. You know, it's not like a big event. Like um, this is more like like intimate. You know, you get to really know and like really you know get get in there get in the, in the and get to know people so i know i know a lot of the traders that are coming and met them through the podcast through the discord some successful traders and traders that are on their way that are that are serious about things so like for example i don't drink i don't really party this is not a party event you know you can do that on your own time for sure but um where where the goal is to learn as much as we can talk network and also Sam the Gash is flying in from Dubai. He's co-hosting the event with me and he's speaking uh, extensively on Saturday. And Sam has helped me have a breakthrough last year, helped me have a mental breakthrough with trading and it, now I'm able to scale up and size up. And, and like, he is the best, man. This guy is like, he's gotta be one of the best in the world at what he does. And uh, we're bringing him in over here from Dubai. He deals with a lot of wealthy people, and like now he's he's coming in specifically for us, um, and yeah, so top notch, you know what I mean. So you get a network with Sam, you get a he gets you get to be introduced to all his techniques and all his you know his stuff that is gonna work wonders, you know what I mean. So if you're interested in leveling up trading hardcore, this is a, the place for you, man. This event, and um, yeah, make sure you sign up ahead of time because it's gonna sell out. And uh, the Friday and Sunday events, which is pretty sick events, you know, it's, you know what I mean? It could be even better than the actual event. It's like you're getting to talk trading with me for hours on end in an intimate setting with other successful traders. God damn, you know, so and on Sunday, you got to come to the athletic club over here, a private social club and talk trading again. So it's like this is how you level up, man. So like, yeah. It's a no-brainer. Sign up. And it's the first event I do. So, like, I'm excited about it. Anyway, today's topic, we're going to talk about mental capital. So, I've been wanting to do a, a podcast specifically on mental capital for, for a minute. And um, mental capital is super important. So, like, at this phase for me right now, but, like, it's always been, you know, in the beginning, it's harder because, like, you're breaking old habits and, like, counterintuitives. You're trying to get intuitive with counterintuitive stuff because trading is all counterintuitive so the stuff that serves you in life it doesn't a lot of times doesn't serve you in trading and um you know it's just about like for me it's about allocating the mental capital to success in trading you know what i mean for example today i was online and the first thing i see when i go to yahoo sports i, I check sometimes the dodgers the, the marlins the Miami marlins the dodgers i like baseball i just glance at the score just like a uh, quick thing but the first thing I do today is to like sign up for fantasy baseball and I was like man I used to be obsessed with fantasy baseball I could just talk all day about fantasy baseball and the stats 
and I wanted to trade players and like I'll be in the fantasy league and I'll be like scheming to trade players and to get waiver wire players and just like spending all this time on fantasy baseball and then watching the real games and then going on message boards of fantasy baseball or message boards of baseball teams it was a lot of time and I'm like man none of that served me you know like you can't make money from that you know what are we gonna do like we're gonna go to Vegas and gamble on, on baseball I, like I don't know anyone that <laughs> I don't know anyone that makes money like that but um but I had fantasy baseball down to a science but yeah, that's, that was a lot for, so I like to use that as an example of like mental capital being wasted. That doesn't help, man. So you need to save your mental capital and like put it at the right stuff, you know, like studying, you know, whatever gives you energy to study more or the people that are supportive in your life that gas you up to do well, you know, no one puts like a, some thought in your head. If someone that you know puts like a thought in your head or a doubt, I would just get rid of that person, man, you know, um, or spend very little time, you know, because like that is mental capital being chipped away that could be applied towards something else. And it's just like, like right now, I went to the gym, I shot some basketball hoops. I worked on my dribbling because after my brain operation, um, my left hand became less, uh, what do you say, coordinated. I had a brain tumor operation a long time ago. Actually, I should make a podcast on that. Um, but yeah, you know, in 2010, and like I like to go dribble the basketball to kind of like work on my coordination. That's something I, I've been doing since uh, Doc Amen. I saw Doc Amen, Doc Amen Clinics. He, this uh, brain doctor that you know he's like a social media celebrity, but also he's like the real deal. He he um he does a lot of like brain work and brain scan work for like celebrities and like he's legit he's a, he's like has all the deg- he, like he's a legit doctor he's not like a fake doctor he's a real doctor anyway he told me when i signed up last year they tailored like a whole uh program for me and part of it was to dribble and get better with uh, the coordination so it's like i like to so for example i came today i enjoyed it i'm not using any mental capital man i'm saving my mental capital for when it counts and like i'm enjoying the dribbling i like my environment I take a nice walk, listen to my audiobook. I'm in cruise control. I'm like, you know, I, I lift the weights now. I, I'm curling 50s, you know, I, so I'm in shape. I'm not like jacked or anything, but I, I am in shape. And uh, I'm eating nice, I'm drinking water. Life is, is like smooth, you know what I mean? No one is, is jumping in there, causing me stress, uh, causing doubt, you know. Um, just a bunch of BS that's going to chip away my mental capital. I'm, I'm very selective of like where I apply my mental capital. So like, you know, um, certain podcasts and books that I like, you know, just things that I enjoy. So like I'm preserving that mental capital. It's almost like like a trade. You're saving the capital and applying it for the A setup. So like my mental capital is, is intact and like I'm waiting for the you know when the market opens I'm ready like a, like an athlete like an Olympic athlete ready getting ready and calming down getting massage you, you know ready to go uh, for the event you know what I mean so yeah um, applying the mental capital where it needs to be applied and for trading all right so for trading you know it's like recently this year I, I uh, blocked out all Chinese stocks blocked them all out and it caused a commotion you know so people you know a lot of uh traders that are that are not profitable they they want to they want to rebuttal me you know whatever i know my stats my stats say no chinese stocks and i don't want to go on a, on a rampage against that but the thing is when i had the brokers block them i knew what i was doing it was like okay so i don't have to worry about 90 95 of chinese stocks only the new ipos that come out I have to, you know, specifically go in there and add them into the list. But everything else, I'm good. So what, what that means is, you know, I don't have to go in with a doubt, oh my God, is this a Chinese stock? Is this this? Like, now I can be like worry-free almost. There's a very low chance that I'm gonna be involved with the Chinese stock. And that means that I can size up more in general for everything. Cause you know, I do well, I do well with trading. I have a high winning percentage. So like, why not size up? So I got to be, when you size up, you, you know, you can't have doubt. You can't be scared or else like that big size is going to, you know, you're going to flinch. And if you're going to flinch, you're going to make mistakes and you're going to, it's going to affect your behavior for trading. 
So like when I have this extra peace of mind that I'm not going to get involved with a Chinese stock, I can size up into everything else. That, that, helps, that helps me push the needle forward for sizing up, you know? So it's like that's, I'm freeing the mental capital and applying it to where it needs to be applied to. So like I'm, I'm allocating the mental capital towards all the setups that work well for me. And I'm not applying the mental capital towards something that might cause me a headache and, and distort all my trading. So mental capital, so important, you know? Um, and the same thing goes for like message boards you're on or discords you're on. You, you gotta like, it's like, for, it's like discords. Like I can't be in like 10 different chat rooms because my bandwidth or my mental capital is gonna be all over the place. You gotta apply it for the one that counts. And that's why I'm in, I'm in, base, I'm in my Discord, that's it. You know, I have access to a couple of others and um, I can't do it, man, because like my mental capital needs to be applied towards one, you know, one so I full focus. And um, the Friendly Bear Discord, very proud of him, very proud of the guys there. Uh, if you look six months ago, when I made the, the YouTube videos on the Discord, I was uh, making them to kind of like get everybody on the same page. And now, man, it is seamless. It is seamless. The analyst section, everybody has the process down. We got, shout out to Wes. Wes came up with the bot. Like this guy knows Polygon and stuff and like coding. Um, we did the pipes. Uh, P-I-P-E-S uh, book review. This guy, like, not only does he do Python and coding and systematic, but he's also wants to consume and learn information. He's a sponge. Shout out to you, Wes, man. Wes is on the, on the way. So, um, yeah, keep it up. So, um, but everybody is on the same page. Mental capital is not being wasted by arguing and rebuttals. Everybody knows the process we go through. By the way, the Business Insider article that came out, today and uh, the one that came out last week. So the author wanted to do a part two. And what's crazy is like, man, she verified everything, everything. So she went through all my statements, even my trading journal, uh, contacted the CEO of my trading journal, a trader sync, spoke to that guy. That guy uh, went through the statements. They went through all my brokers, man. Like I, you know, and then they, they were even, looking me up about my uh doing a background check on me and like checking my degree in architecture and like <laughs> it's hardcore so now it's all verified but um but yeah the, she, what, when i was talking with her i just spilled everything all the all the process that i go through and she understands trading this journalist is, is uh understands trading she understands the language so she was able to like condense everything into like a pretty sick checklist so like that article is not fluff, the one from last week and the one from this week. That is like straight up what I do. That's probably like 60% of what I do. A lot of, I mean, a lot of it's like experience and stuff, but she broke it down and put it out there. And like, you know, I've never been one to hold back uh, as far as strategy and stuff. You know, when people say, oh, like, uh, I don't want to give you my edge. I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't care. People don't listen anyway. So, um. I read recently on the Short Bears Substack. I made a I made a podcast on that too. I, made, I put it I put it on audio. I made an audio version of it so you can like go back and listen to it like an audio book on the podcast. But no one listens to it. But I listened to it and I read it, so benefited me. But yeah, Richard Dennis was one of the, the he's the guy that created the Turtle Traders, and he um he's famous for saying even if I publish my rules in the newspaper, no one's gonna listen to it. So like. That is so true. And like, I knew that from the beginning. Cause like when I started the Friendly Bear podcast and I, I was up like 200 grand and I'm at trade space in Puerto Rico, surrounded by successful traders. And still I was getting just like a few hundred views or not even, I mean like 50 views when I first started, maybe less. But the audio one was a little bit more popular, but still like nothing. I was like, damn, you know? So I'm here, I'm already a profitable. I'm doing pretty well. And like, no one wants to listen. <laughs> You know, well, that's the way it is. Um, I heard uh, MIC Alex, Alex, uh, the, the trader over there, he was on with Lucci 
and Harry Haas and uh, James Freelander the other day on their their podcast, MIC After Hours. Shout out to the, all those guys. But uh, yeah, Alex was saying he used to do like uh, YouTube videos all the time, and like no one would, would listen, so he just stopped doing them. He just does uh, once in a while now. But um, for me, honestly, I, I enjoy doing it. The few people that have come into my circle have like been game changer uh, for me. You know what I mean? And just like it helps me reinforce my trading. As you can see, like the, the short bear sub stack or the trade the matrix. I'm going to be doing aspects research soon and all day faders. I mean, that benefits me so much, man. Like I, I it holds me accountable to reading it. I get to listen to it. I usually listen to it two or three times and it's cataloged. So like, this is like the way, you know what I mean? And, um, and I'm doing trade reviews now every day um, for the bear subscribers. This helps me instead of like journaling and writing it out, I'm going in and I'm, I'm doing this for myself and like I'm getting a, to bring others into my circle as well. So like, it's pretty sick. So I don't mind doing it, even if no one watches, I don't care. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's just, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, the mental, going back to mental capital, man. So yeah, just apply the mental capital where it needs to be applied. You got to make sure what, what you're feeding into your brain. I mean, it's, no, no, it's a no-brainer. It's like, make sure you're feeding yourself good stuff, you know? If you're, if you're on Instagram and you're browsing through random shit, you know, I could always tell what someone's looking at. Like, when someone posts in their stories, um some random shit i'm like wow so like their their instagram feed is feeding them that and why is it feeding them that because they're they're watching dumb shit if we look at my instagram like my stories that i repost this is good shit this is like tim grover i got recently a lot of mike tyson quotes and stuff and you know muhammad ali and like patrick bet david and everybody around like all the ed my uh what is it a bunch of other guys I don't know, man, but it's all like stuff that like helps with personal growth, with business, you know? So like, I'm not looking at dumb shit. I'm not looking at cat videos. I'm not looking at like drama. Like I, I curated my feed because I know that like my, when I'm staring at something on Instagram is feeding me, it's that, that's mental capital being applied. And if I'm paying attention to something, it better be like giving me value back. If not, I'd rather be it getting nothing because I'd rather just be zen you know like today when I was dribbling the basketball I was zen it was just me in the court in this beautiful court at the athletic club a historic court it's like from the 20s the roaring 20s you know so I'm just there dribbling and I, like I'm staring my environment is so nice I'm the only one there this is where I want to be I don't want to be like I don't want some video on Instagram some reel to interrupt that um so it's like, I'd rather be in that calm state of just nothing or just even up here, just uh, enjoying the scenery. That's like applying no mental capital. I'm not paying attention to the music. There's a concert over there. I'm not paying attention to anything. I'm just like in my own world. I'm, I'm, I'm saving that mental capital and de re ready to deploy it where it needs to be deployed, which is like Monday, you know, for trading. That's, that's important. Um, yeah, you know, it's just like, enjoying life man but um but you know I'm, i keep thinking back okay so when i when i was first starting or when i was first on the beginning of the right path right like um you know what's crazy you don't have to like be perfect to start to be like a six-figure trader or make 50 grand 100 grand i still had a lot of flaws in my trading i still had a lot of flaws in my habits but you can still like begin and to be profitable by not being perfect you know but you gotta be like on, but you gotta be on the path. You know what I mean? You gotta be on the path of just like striving for it. So you just keep improving and keep tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. So you get to that level, and then you have another breakthrough and another breakthrough. You know, so there's just that's why I love trading too. You know, it's like infinite levels, man. But um, what else? A couple more minutes. Let's see. But yeah, when you're first starting trading, it's like, or when you're first starting to get profitable. So you still have a lot of flaws, you know? I still watch um, Netflix, for example. I would still watch uh, movies, you know, that didn't, you know, like, waste of time. I don't want to watch movies right now, man. I want to, 
You know, it's like I, I want to do something productive. You know, I want to study something today. So today, for example, okay, so today's Saturday. What did I do? I cleaned my whole apartment while I was listening to um, Tim Lento's webinar from last week. And I listened to another webinar um, that, last week that were live. I just catch him up at 1.5 speed. I listened to um, an audio book that I, that I just downloaded from uh, Jordan Peterson. I worked out over here, went to the basketball court, worked out, lift some weights. Uh, you know, I took all my vitamins today. I did some pull-ups at, at my apartment. I walked around the block. I'm just like, I don't want to watch a movie, you know? Watching a movie, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not gonna, I would have missed out on the webinar. I'd rather watch a webinar. <laughs> so it's like, but when I was starting out, I had a lot of holes like that. I, I would want to watch a movie, I would get tired. I want to get some entertainment. Maybe I'll think it's Saturday night. Maybe I'll hit up a, a somewhere, you know, so a social environment. You know what I mean? Now I have no interest, so now it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to stay focused. But um, in the beginning, you can have those those uh, flaws, and you, you know, as you, as you start to improve, you just it just gets easier as far as like your discipline, you know. Um, and I'll finish up. Yeah, why not? So like. Tim Sykes has been mentioning a lot about um, uh, you don't need to have a disciplined diet. You don't need to be disciplined and work out. You can just like do this, whatever. And you know, Tim's just trying to get like attention. It's kind of like um, like the guy that uh, on, that went viral on YouTube for saying like got, all guys should get a vasectomy in their 20s and like it's ridiculous. But like he went viral. I guess Tim's just trying to go viral. But how, like discipline, working out exercising staying focused I mean your discipline from outside of trading is gonna leak into your trading so if you're undisciplined outside of trading it's gonna leak into your trading so it's like there's not much you can control when the markets going on and you're in the trade but like before you get in the trade you can control you know there's things you can control and if you strengthen that muscle of uh, discipline the discipline muscle is gonna I mean it's a no-brainer it helps so it's like, you know, it's like, um, yeah, you gotta, you gotta work on discipline. It's like different ways to work on discipline. But yeah, you know, Tim was, was uh, just mentioning all that stuff. Um, I don't know what else, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys next time.